All right, so first flip lesson, we're going to quickly go over these. I would advise trying these on your own first and just checking your answers against mine. So first, you got to get rid of the parentheses. You'll get 6x squared plus 12x minus 4x squared plus 2x by just distributing the 2x and the negative sign here. So combine your like terms, and you'll get 2x squared plus 14x. Again, if you had to pause, pause. But I would advise doing these first, what's four? These first seven on your own, just as a good way to check yourself to see how well you're doing. Again, I got to do double distribution here. 5x times x, 5x times minus 3, 4 times x, 4 times minus 3, which gives me that. 5x squared minus 15x plus 4x minus 12. I combine my like terms and I get 5x squared minus 11x minus 12. 3x minus 7 squared. Again, I think it's easier just to rewrite the problem. Rewrite it as 3x minus 7 times 3x minus 7. Because that's what it means to square something. And then when I multiply it out, I'll get 9x squared minus 21x minus 21x plus 49. Combine your like terms, and you get 9x squared minus 42x plus 49. This one, this one there's not much to do. I can leave this one exactly the way it is. This one I have to run that outside 3 and multiply that by all the exponents on the inside. So when I do that, I get 3 to the 3rd, x to the 6th, y to the 3rd, z to the 9th. I just rewrote that one. I didn't touch it. And then I got to multiply 3 to the 3rd times negative 2. 3 to the 3rd is 27 times negative 2 is negative 54 x to the 6th times x to the 1st, you add the exponents and you get x to the 7th. y to the 3rd times y to the 4th gives you y to the 7th. And I have no other z terms, which is just z to the 9th. We did one of these in class. I get rid of the parentheses first, and I get 5x minus 30. And I just keep the 4x plus 6, I mean equal 6. Combine your like terms, you get 9x minus 30 equals 6. Add 30 to both sides, you get 9x equals 36. Divide both sides by 9, you get x equals 4. Over here, where am I at? I subtract 56 from both sides, and I get 3x squared minus 48 is equal to 0. I factor out a 3. I have a, light, I have a 3 here, I have 48 here. They both share a 3. I can factor out a 3. So what, what's 3 times x squared? It's 3x squared. What's 3 times negative 16? It's negative 48. So I haven't changed it. I just rewrote it. So now I have two products. I have 3 times x squared minus 16 is equal to 0. So if two things are multiplied together and it equals 0, one of them must be equal to 0. Obviously, 3 is not equal to 0. So it must be that x squared minus 16 equals 0. We'll talk more about this one in class. I factor this x plus 4 times x minus 4, and I get x equals plus or minus 4. Don't worry so much about this one. I'll talk more about this one in class. This one, I have a 3 on the bottom. I don't want a 3 on the bottom. Multiply both sides by 3, because 3 divided by 3, these are going to go away. That's what I want. But on the left-hand side, I have 3 times 2x, which is 6x. 3 times minus 5 is negative 15. On the right-hand side, this 3 times 3, that those this 3 on the bottom and this 3 go away leaves me the 4x. Want all my x's on one side, I have x's on both. So I subtract 4x from both sides, which gives me 2x minus 15 is equal to 0. Now I want the 15 to go to the other side, add 15 to both sides. I get 2x equals 15, divide both sides by 2, and I get x equals 15 over 2. Fractions are much better than decimals, just leave it as a fraction. Alright, new stuff. There are three undefined terms in a geometry class. As it says, they are the building blocks for all the other figures we're going to talk about. The first one is called a point. A point, it names a location, and it has no size. It is represented by a dot. For example, that's a point. That's talking about point P. Again, if you have to pause, pause. I apologize, this first unit, this first couple of days, it's a lot of vocab, a lot of definitions. But you have to know what they mean. If you have to pause to get them all in, just pause it. A line, it's a straight path with no thickness that extends forever. Basically, if you string a whole bunch of points together, and a point has no size, so if I string a whole bunch of them together and connect them, that makes a line, it's still not going to have any thickness. It extends forever in both directions. 
I can name it one of two ways. I can write it out, the word line, with the cursive lowercase, or I can use two capital, la two capital letters with the line on top, with arrows on both ends. That is very important. All right? A plane. A plane is a flat surface with no thickness that, again, extends forever in all directions. And we either name with the capital cursive letter or we use the word plane and we just use three points that lie on that plane. Again, I'm not expecting you guys to be experts, but have an understanding next time I see you. From the three previous terms, we can now define everything else. Collinear. What does it mean to be collinear? They are points that lie on the same line. So it's just a fancy way of saying I have points that lie on the same line. So if points A, B, and C are all collinear, they all lie on the same line. Coplanar just means that I have points that lie on the same plane. If I have points A, B, C, D, and E, if they are all coplanar, they all lie on the same plane. Segment. It is only part of a line. It's part of a line that consists of two points and all the points between them. Again, if you have to pause, pause. What does a line segment look like? It looks like this. It does not go forever in both directions. It starts at A and ends at B. Or it starts at B and ends at A. How do we write them? How do we, how do we, what's the notation we use? We use two capital letters, but we just put a little bar on top. Because this one's not a line, it does not go forever in both directions, so we only put a bar. It does not matter which letters go first. You can call it AB or BA, it does not matter. The order doesn't matter, but the bar on top does. If you put arrows on the ends, you're wrong. It must be just the bar. An endpoint. It's a point at one end of a segment or the starting point of a ray. And what's a ray, you ask? We're about to talk about it. So again, if you have to pause, pause. Just be familiar with this vocab next time I see you. Array. It is part of a line that starts at an endpoint and extends forever in only one direction. For example, this ray right here it starts at X and goes forever in the direction of Y. And how do we name rays? Two capital letters. This first letter must always be the endpoint. So it ends at X, goes forever in Y, and the ray must always, the, the ray on top of the two letters must always point to the right. No matter what way the ray is pointing, when we're labeling it, we, the ray must always point to the right. Opposite rays, as it says, two rays that have a common endpoint and they connect to form a line, they're going two different directions. They connect and do form a line. So this is opposite rays. So there, if I cover that, that's ray yx goes from y in the direction of x and this is ray yz and so if I'm going to name them both there they are yz and yx postulate it's a statement that is accepted without proof we just accept that it's true we don't have to work out a proof to show it. and we'll quickly go through some of these just think about these to benefit yourself, think about what the answers might be before you do it, and then compare your answers with mine. First one, exactly one line passes through two distinct points. Is that always true, sometimes true, or never true? That one is always true. Put a little star by that. Skip number two and number three. I don't, I don't really like those. Number four, three points are coplanar always true. Put a little star by that one. Three coplanar points are collinear. So it says if I have three points and they all lie on the same plane, then they also lie on the same line. Always, sometimes, never. What do you think? Sometimes. Two lines intersect at exactly one point. Always. Put a little star by that. Three lines intersect at exactly one point. We could talk about this one in class. I don't really like the wording of this one. I'm going to put sometimes, see if you can justify a different answer in class. Two, po two planes intersect at exactly one point. Put a little star by this one, and we're going to put in. That is never true. Two lines are coplanar. So if I have two lines, are they always in the same plane? That's going to be sometimes. And that's it.
So that's all the notes for today. Please have this filled out, and we'll talk about this in class and do some problems with this, and then we'll start the new material.